But Lord, this is a superb moment in my life. I must say, I'm, A lot of people to thank, so I'm going to take a few more minutes than I'd, I'd like to otherwise. Now, now, now to follow, follow, follow Al Bell, he's a, such an amazing man. I worked with him at Columbia Records for a long time. This has been an extraordinary tribute and one of the most important moments of my career, as you know. I thank you all so much. I particularly want to thank Neil Fortnow and the Board of Naris for this amazing honor. And now that you've seen this video presentation, for a small fee, I'll reluctantly provide you with my private amnesia list of all the stiffs that I signed <laughs> that are in this presentation. I really particularly want to thank all my many mentors that I've had in this crazy endeavor called the music business. To start, I want to thank my best friend in college, Mike Berniker. On my very first day at Bucknell University during freshman orientation week, there was a young student standing next to me very nervous and humming to himself, Night in Tunisia. I turned around and I asked him if he liked jazz, and he said, I love jazz. We became lifelong friends from that very first day at college. Mike also gave me my first opportunity for an interview at Columbia Records when he was a trainee there, and I was just out of the Army. And last night, if you saw Barbara Streisand last night, amazing performance at Music Cares, Mike Berniker happened to be the young man that produced our first three albums. He was a great friend of mine. He passed away several, weeks, several years ago. And he, I, 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 I thank him for being my friend. I thank God for his friendship and his inspiration and, and his guidance through all my career. I miss him greatly to this day. I also want to thank the late Bill Gallagher, who gave me my first job in the record business in 1960. When I told him I would work for nothing if he'd paid my bus fare in from New York City. <laughs> well, he I didn't let me, he, took, he hired me, and he didn't pay me next to nothing, but he, he did pay me very little indeed, but it was a great experience. <laughs> It was a great inspiration when I worked at Columbia Records. There was a man named Goddard Lieberson who was a visionary former president of CBS Records and taught me, among other things, that we have a very serious business responsibility to our parent company, as well as a greater responsibility, actually, to an art form that happens to be called music. If we get the art form right, he said, the business will come right along with it. That mantra is as relevant today as it always was. Just slow down a little bit, I'm sorry. I was also very honored in, in, at Columbia Records to meet John Hammond. He actually worked there with, with me for a long time. He was the greatest signer of talent in the history of the music industry, in my opinion. He discovered Billie Holiday, Count Basie, Aretha Franklin, Bob Dylan, George Benson, Bruce Springsteen, and countless others. He taught me that there are two kinds of signings in this business, acts that you can, deli that you can deliver hits from time to time, and real artists who deliver careers. He taught me that if you're lucky enough to find an artist that is truly original, don't second guess yourself. Have the courage to sign the act no matter what. He was right about that, always. And Nora Jones is a good example of that in my life. Clive Davis also was led, led by example and inspired an entire team of people to a higher level of excellence. It's amazing to me that he's still out there signing major hit artists at the tender age of 39. <laughs> and it was Joe Smith who gave me the opportunity to start my first jazz label at Electra Records, Electra Musician. He taught me the importance of not taking myself too seriously also. I have to think, particularly thank a man named Basker Menon, who was the chairman of EMI Records, when he gave me my first job to run Blue Note Records and also to take on a new pop label in New York called Manhattan. He's an amazing man. He's a good friend of mine to this day. I'm a big fan of his. as a great leader. And a special shout out to my friend Michael Cascuna, the other side of my heartbeat and very often the other side of my hangover and my partner in, re, in re, re, relaunching the Blue Note label. He introduced me to the legendary Alfred Lyon, the founder of Blue Note, who became our spiritual godfather in the early days of the rebirth of the label. I particularly want to thank my wife Kay, who for the past 50 years has been my rock of support, my sternest critic, as many people know, and my best friend. She, she gave me three wonderful sons and two beautiful granddaughters, and I love her very much. Sorry. For the past 50 years, I've enjoyed an adventure that has been the most fun I've ever had with my clothes on. <laughs> I, want to think, I want to sincerely thank all my colleagues and friends in this business over the past 50 years who have been a joy to work with. 
particularly the original Blue Noters, and you know who you are, for sharing my vision and keeping Blue Note Records as the number one record that jazz label in the industry, the finest in jazz since 1939. There's a man I wanted to honor also tonight who, who came to Blue Note Records with Ian Ralphini, my partner in crime also, a man named Reef Martin, one of the greatest producers in the history of the record business. A man that inspired every one of us that worked for him, worked with him at, at, at Blue Note and Manhattan Records. He was the chairman of Manhattan Records along with Ian. We miss him dearly. He's, he produced Nora Jones' first album, which sold 20 some odd million, million records at this point. He's just an amazing man. Inspiration to everyone that worked with him, and particularly to myself. Finally, a special thanks to Colin Finkelstein and Roger Faxon, two amazing executives, who this January renewed my contract as Chairman Emeritus. I appreciate their, their courage in keeping I appreciate their courage in keeping me on as an analog man in a digital world. Well, that was a good line, but I didn't deliver it very well. It'll be my job to continue working with the highly qualified successors that we appointed here, Ian Ralphini and Eli Wolf. Two great, uh, really, truly great music men. I have great respect for and I can't wait to work, work with them for another year. The reason I'm in this business in the first place are the artists. They're the heartbeat of every label. And I'd particularly like to thank I'd particularly like to acknowledge and thank a very special artist in my life and a dear friend. He was the very first artist that I had anything to do with signing with through a record company back in the 1970s in Columbia Records. Absolutely the most visionary artist that I've ever worked with and the man has remained so today. He's made a point of, to be here with us today and I'm so proud of that. He and his wife Gigi are here with us. Please welcome Herbie Hancock. <laughs> Herbie. I've been in this business since the time when songs were short and careers were long. <laughs> to a present time of great uncertainty, I can assure you of one thing. There are more creative musical voices out there than ever before. The very reason why this business will not only survive but thrive in the years to come. If everyone says to you, anyone says to you, what's going on with the music industry dying? You just give them an evasive answer. Tell them what W.C. Fields would have said, you'll fuck yourself. <laughs> I, for one, can never retire from music, and I hope I will never do so. I'm going to be on this doing something in this music business for as long as I'm alive on this planet. So I thank you very much for this very wonderful award. Thank you so much. Yes, I will. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chris.